have been looking at former President Trump's arraignment this morning. It is happening later this afternoon. We're expecting it to happen at 2.15 p.m. Eastern. I'm told the president will leave Trump Tower uh, around 1, and he will be downtown by 1.30. Yahoo News is reporting that he'll face more than 30 felony counts. That includes falsification of business records, but will not be put in handcuffs or have a mugshot taken. This is according to Yahoo News. The only way they would know such things is if there was a leak from the Manhattan DA's office, because this indictment remains sealed. A new CNN poll finds 76 percent of people think that politics played at least some role here in the decision to indict Trump, 76 percent. Joining me right now is Texas Congressman, member of the House Homeland Security Committee and House Energy and Commerce Committee member August Pfluger. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. I want to get to H.R. 1, the Republicans' number one most important bill on energy and, of course, your region uh, of the Permian Basin, which is so critical for energy independence. But first, let me get your ta take on the Trump indictment. How do you see things? Well, good to see you as well, Maria. Thank you for having me. And my question is, where are those other 24 percent of people with their head in the sand that don't think this was politicized? Mm -hmm. It's flagrant. We had two, in, in the case of Alvin Bragg, bragging about trying to go after Trump even before he was elected. His predecessor wouldn't take it up. The federal prosecutors wouldn't take it up. And now, who's responsible for leaking a sealed indictment with 30 counts? Um, th this is so dangerous. This is what banana republics do. It's what failed states do. We cannot let our justice system be politicized. That's exactly what the Democrat Party is doing. We have a, you're an elected official. What are you going to do about it? I mean, that's what's happening, Congressman. Most people you speak with will say, yeah, this is flagrant. That is a good word for this. And they're not believing that this is real, that it's all get Trump tactics. But you're an elected official. What can be done about this? What are you going to do about the weaponization of our federal agencies? Well, thankfully, Speaker McCarthy has a select committee on just that, the weaponization of government. And we're taking it very seriously, because if, if this can happen to Donald Trump, somebody with 100 percent name ID throughout the world, it can happen to anyone. Any agency can and has been weaponized. We're going after the weaponization on the Energy and Commerce Committee to make sure that the EPA and other agencies don't weaponize. We know that they've been doing that. We defunded 87,000 IRS agents. That was the first bill we passed. We are continuing to work through legislation to stop what the Biden administration has done for the last two years. But that, these are the stakes. If it can happen to Donald Trump, it can happen to you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about uh, that policy on energy. H.R. 1 is the Republicans' number one most important bill here, passing the House, but the president says he's going to veto it. Oil prices are higher this morning because OPEC Plus announced it's going to cut more output. They'll cut one, more than one million barrels a day. Crude prices up 6.3 percent yesterday, another three quarters of a percent today. Yesterday, the steepest one day increase in over a year. President Biden claims he's not worried about it. Watch this. Mr. President, on OPEC, do you have any reaction to the oil production cuts, sir? OPEC? On OPEC. It's not going to be as bad as you think, according to Joe Biden, Congressman. Well, here we go again. I think one of the most iconic images of the Biden administration will be the president going to Saudi Arabia, talking to the crown prince and begging for oil. What he should have been doing, Maria, is coming to my district. He should have been talking to the mayor of Midland. He should have asked for us to unleash American energy. That is why we prioritized H.R. 1, House Resolution 1, which lowers the cost of energy for every American. It unleashes our own domestic production, it cuts the red tape on permitting, and it allows us to export and, and produce what we need right here instead of being beholden to the OPEC cartel. It's so dangerous. We need to be able to get back to where we were under President Trump with an independent and dominant energy sector because it underpins everything in our economy. And everything that we're talking about right now with inflation has been caused because the administration has single-handedly assaulted this industry, and it's hurting American families. Let's not be beholden on foreign dictators to tell us how much production and how much supply we have to deal with. Let's do it ourselves.
Well, you know that the president does not agree with you, right? <laughs> Certainly not. In fact, he's gone out of his way to hamper our own production and then complains about the oil and gas industry not being able to produce. But, but it's his administration, it's his yeah. policies that have prevented it. Yeah. Real quick, Congressman, I got to get your take on the border. You met with a woman from near your district last night. Her second grade daughter and 71 year old mother were killed in a car crash involving a human smuggler uh, speeding away from police. Tell me about that and tell me about the wide open border. Another issue that the administration is pushing forth on on an open border, despite you and your colleagues pushback. This story is tragic. It's heartbreaking. Uh, the young mother with her daughter and now her 71-year-old mother who have been killed senselessly by a human trafficker who was trafficking 11 illegal immigrants doing 105 miles per hour on the interstate uh, when he ran into oh their vehicle. God. A senseless tragedy. It's just horrible. They came to a town hall of mine last night. There was over 100 people at the town hall, and they're angry because of Biden's wide open policies. And this family in particular wanted to hold Mayorkas accountable. They want to know when he's gonna be held accountable. That is why we are prioritizing the border security bill. It's why it's our number two priority to make sure that whether it's fentanyl or human traffickers or any other tragedy associated with the dereliction of duty from our president and Alejandro Mayorkas, that we do hold them accountable. That's exactly what the American public uh, that's what they elected us to do. That's why they put us in the majority, and that is yeah. what we are doing. We look forward to having Mayorkas in yeah. front of Congress, um, and he owes that family an apology. And do you think he'll get impeached? You know, it's a great question. I think we're building the case to show that Raul Ortiz, the head of Border Patrol, has said that we don't have operational control. And meanwhile, just right. a couple of days ago, my this is still saying that the border is a challenge. No, it's not a challenge. It's a crisis and it's a tragedy. Yeah. Congressman, thank you. We'll be watching all of that. We'll keep a spotlight on it. August Fluger, thank you so much, sir.